Welcome to the Essence of Knowledge Group. This meeting is organized for the participants of the program of Path of Knowledge. And this is done in both Hindi and English. There is a announcement that uh, we have launched the version 3 of the program. And uh, those who complete the old versions, they will get access to the version 3. And the version 3 is not very different from version 2. But the videos were edited a little bit. A few changes were made in the program and it is now a little bit shorter and more precise. And we have removed the content on uh, illusion, the last 10 chapters removed from the program. And we have changed the practices a little bit. The meditation sitting practices are removed for, from the program. So those who have uh, who are in the version 2, it, they will find that it is easier than version 2 now. So those who join the new version, they will also get admitted to this group. So this is uh, some kind of transition we are having right now. Some people are still in the old programs, old groups. They will continue there. New ones are being admitted to this group, Essence of Knowledge group, Hindi and English. In future, we'll separate the Hindi and English. And uh, finally, this group will become totally a group for participants of the program. There is one more uh, change that has been made that once you finish the program, you will leave this group and you can join the other public groups. This one major change has been made so that the group will concentrate only on those who are doing the program. After finishing the program, there is really no need of this group. If you get any questions and all, you can ask them in the public groups. There are many groups as you know. So I think some people have joined here and if there are any questions, you can ask. Vishaka has a question in lesson basic analysis. I want to know more about the two aspects, non-local. Um, basic analysis of what? We have three basic analysis there and two aspects. One is non-local. Which one is the other? Question is a little bit incomplete. Let me know. Okay, non-local and non-procedural. So actually, the existence, experience and the experience, they are one. So if I explain for one, it will be explained for all. Non-local means the existence is not an object whose location can be found. Location means place. Our everyday intelligence works in the world. And we sometimes ask this question, where is something? For example, I can ask, where is your house? Then you can actually pinpoint the location that I live in this and this place, this city, this map, so on. You can be located and your house can be located. Same way I can ask, where are you? And then you can tell me your location. If our everyday intelligence starts asking the same question about the existence, experience, experiencer, then we don't get the answer. Where is existence? Suppose I ask this question. Assuming that I don't know what it is, it is a new word for me. How will you answer it? Are you going to pinpoint a location that look, go in this direction, take this road, take this bus and you will reach existence? That is not possible because it is defined as everything. So where can you find everything? Because it is everywhere already. And all the locations will be found in the existence because it is defined like everything. All that exists is the existence. So all the places are already included in that meaning of the word existences. That it will not be found in a specific place just like any other object or a person or anything or a country or a planet or a universe or any mental state. No location. Then where it is? It is everywhere already. So when we try to use our everyday intelligence to answer the where question, where is it? You'll find that it fails. It is not applicable there. So we say existence has no location. A more precise sentence you can say that the location is not applicable to existence. You cannot locate the existence. Do not try to think of existence as an object or something which is found in places. Everything is found in existence. And the technical word for that is non-local. Non-local means locations are not applicable. 
the, the idea of location is meaningless when you apply to the existence. There are many things that are non-local actually in your everyday experience also. We can give some examples like where is air? Can you point to a specific location in a country, in a city, in a building? Where is air? Atmosphere. And everybody will laugh. They will say, no, air is everywhere. Do not ask the place of air. Everything is already inside air, isn't it? We live in the bottom of the ocean called air, atmosphere. It is everywhere, at least on this planet. But that is not the complete um, metaphor. Because if you leave the planet, you can show the location of the air. Look, the air is around earth. It is not anywhere else. But assuming that you are on this planet, air is everywhere. So the air is non-local. And yes, it fails if you go outside the planet. But then you can ask, where is space? And people will say, it is not applicable. Don't ask this question. Space is everywhere. Now that metaphor is so perfect that it won't fail as long as you are in the physical universe. You are always in some kind of space, empty space. So whichever planet you travel to, you are always in space. It is very perfect metaphor that everything is inside space. Space, space is not found inside a location. But uh, very strangely, that metaphor will also fail. Can somebody tell me? Where will the metaphor of space being non-local fails? In what condition? Because we, are <laughs> we have nothing else to do in the satsang. So we are doing questions and answers. After this, I'll come to non-procedural also. If there are not many questions, then I like to explain in detail. Can somebody tell me? So it is very interesting actually that uh, the concept of space will fail if your state of mind changes. It changes every night. You must have noticed. You leave the waking state where space and all these things are there and you enter the dream state. When you change your mental state, in which direction will you go to reach the space of the dream? Because there is a space in the dream. You can walk, you can travel, you can fly if you want. Anup is saying deep sleep. Yes, no space in deep sleep. No question of omnipresence or non-locality there. So very strangely, these metaphors, they fail. But uh, the metaphor of existence, it's not a metaphor actually. Existence never fails. It is always non-local. Like you take the example of dreams and you can ask there, everything exists in the dream and where is it existing? And you can call it existence. But there is experience and the experiencer. That's all. That's all there is. All the locations are in the dream. So that existence is always non-local in all mental states. This is very, very strange thing. All our, all your examples of non-local things will fail. Okay, so now we reach non-procedural. Procedure means a process. You know, procedure word is derived from the word process. Process means sequence of events. One event, then the next event, then another event. Always answer the how question, H-O-W, how, as a process. How to make a clay pot, let us say. Clay pot is the basic metaphor in non-duality. How to make the clay pot. First event, take the clay. Second event, put some water. Third event, you rotate it on the wheel. Fourth event, you bake it. Pot is ready, probably paint it. This is a whole process. This is the procedure to, to make the pot. Now you can answer the how question. How to make a pot? How was the pot made? How did the pot, clay pot appear? Those who don't know what is existence, they will ask this question obviously. They heard this word now, all the everyday questions will be asked. The intellect has only these seven questions to know about anything. So how was the existence made? Or you can use experience or experience anything you want. All these three things are one. How was existence? made how did it appear what was the procedure to create it what is the process behind it and we see that if you specify a process if you start explaining a process step number one step number two step number three and final step existence or the experience or the experiencer but all these step number one two three four they already exist they are being witnessed there is a witness 
there is experience of these steps there is the experiencer of the steps so what is actually the product what is actually created is something else not existence explaining the existence as a process will always fail because of this reason because it is everything and it simply exists it is not something which was made it is not an object it is not a thing or it is not even a state that you can ask how is the dream made and then you can explain a process you go to sleep then the senses shut down not shut down they become inactive then the memory start starts playing and other these, these experiences appear you can tell me a procedure a process for it but uh, there is always something preceding the process there is always something which is already existing so that the dream could appear and in case of existence if something is already existing it is the existence only form is different so only the form must have changed so again we say it is not applicable do not ask the how question for the existence it is not your everyday thing it is the whole same way do not ask the how question about uh, experiencer also if you define a process for appearance of the experiencer then this whole process will be witnessed yes you can uh, theorize the process this is the theory and this theoretical process created the experiencer but it will always remain a theory that means imagination imagination because to be for it to become real it must be an experience of somebody at least some great person who is theorizing it and if it is experience the experiencer is already present to experience it so whenever these these processes will be experienced you can safely say that they are experienced by the experiencer it is already present no process can create it processes are useful for your everyday objects not that which is fundamental cannot be created okay so another question now because it's very interesting isn't it? there are some examples in our everyday life which are not created by anything can somebody tell me one example there are some things which you experience about which you will never find a process what is that I'm not talking about existence or experience in your experience also there is something which has no process at all same way like we said air is omnipresent non local space is omnipresent non local there is there, there are things which are um, non procedural in our everyday experience but they are metaphors they are examples you know they are not actually non procedural anup is saying illusion illusion of what the whole thing is illusion isn't it whatever you experience the whole thing is illusion which means it is experience and the experience is same as existence existence is non procedural that is there is no doubt about it no process can be described for it but uh, i am saying that in our everyday experience also there are specific things vishaka is saying sleep no you can describe the process of sleep yes you cannot say that it is generated by something it is change of state it is change of state but you can describe a process that uh, the senses become inactive the body becomes restful the there are some processes that change in the body and the mind and that state will be called sleep shaga saying many times we don't know how we fall asleep yes we don't know actually how to how this sleep works but still it is not that uh, mysterious those who have mastered the states they know how it works <laughs> these people are called the yogis they are in a state called turiya state last time last week we discussed the turiya state somebody asked this question so at that time you will come to know what is sleep how it arrives but not knowing the process is a different thing and not having a process fundamentally is totally different thing when i say i don't know the process simply ignorance but when i say there is no process it is not ignorance it is knowledge i am very confident there is no process okay i'll tell you the sensation of colors this is the answer to the puzzle what is it that cannot be described how how cannot be described of sensations of colors for example you are looking at a red flower how did the red appear there who created the red how how did it get there how was the red color created 
and you can do it as a homework but uh, there is no process for that these things are called irreducible in our program irreducible that means there is nothing before them there is nothing more fundamental before colors same way sounds same way smells cold and hot and emotions and many things they are also called tanmatras in the sank philosophy because that is the smallest experience and there is no process to create that experience it is very amazing that our everyday experience there is no explanation of it how it is produced color is one thing some people will say look it is the red light that is getting reflected okay but light is a concept actually there is no light in the universe in existence so when you look at light it is not colored obviously and um, some people will say it is a wavelength of the light wavelength is totally different and color is totally different wavelength is measurement of change and color is our experience perception we can say that this wavelength is related to this color whenever this color is seen that wavelength is seen but that does not produce the color this is major problem in philosophy that what causes something and what is correlated to something and the funny thing is in the wavelength and not always gets correlated to the color because you see there are many examples in our program where i show that the yellow color can be produced by red and green mixing red wavelength green wavelength you should get a yellow wavelength but no <laughs> mixing two wavelengths does not produce yellow wavelength they are both absorbed by the eyes and they produce the illusion of yellow color which is not correlated to any wavelength this is amazing so <laughs> nobody really knows and we we know in the path of knowledge we know that it is me the red color is me the yellow color is me and because i am not procedural i am non procedural there is no procedure by which you can get a color perception of the color not produced by procedure very few people know these things whatever they know is sim- they simply repeat whatever they are told in schools so <laughs> the, the seeker goes far beyond ordinary people or scientists or philosophers also because philosophers will talk about these things but uh, seeker knows that it is me i am appearing as colors in all the irreducibles how now, again the intellect has the same issue that it wants to know how because it has seen the processes applied to daily life but i am non procedural but this is the experience you will say no experience is also non procedural it just is it is the most fundamental as soon as you apply a process to produce something it does not remain fundamental so that whatever changed into that object will be fundamental so whatever changed into the red color is existence itself there is nothing else there which is more fundamental and that existence is me i am the source so this is very very puzzling it is we say it is beyond intellect because the intellect will not accept this answer jerna is saying please tell me something about projections it can happen any time uh, yes it can happen any time only to those who have a little bit of practice either this lifetime's practice previous lifetime's practice if there are previous lifetimes where you practiced projected states it will be very easy in this lifetime and there are very rare people where it happens without practice we call it spontaneous projection and why does that happen because it happens to everybody it is a natural state people don't remember it that is the problem you go into projected state every night or whenever you sleep deep sleep is actually not deep sleep it is projected state so without because there is no practice behind these states you don't pra- have any formal practice so you don't remember it but it happens to everybody sometimes accidentally people remember that experience and uh, that will be called spontaneous projection but if you practice the practices are given in our tantra bodhi program also or i have mentioned it publicly actually some part is given free to everybody uh, on the videos in the videos in the books etc there are thousands of videos about these states so if you practice like that you will get it intentionally that will be called the induced projection and the more you practice it it becomes natural for you then not only they happen any time they will happen on command whenever you want it will happen so what is the use of all these things how to do it who can do it 
these are these things are covered in tantra bodhi tantra bodhi program we have removed it actually it was in our path of knowledge program but we have removed it because it is a big distraction for a newcomer for a seeker who is trying to remain in awareness because awareness is needed for all these advanced practice so i removed it but it is not gone you can join the tantra bodhi do the practices it will take many many years many many lifetimes to become a master jagdish is saying does experiencer has awareness or awareness itself is experiencer i am unable to distinguish them awareness means knowledge of the experiencer it means this knowledge that i am the experiencer this knowledge that i am not body mind memory any other object this knowledge is called awareness that i am aware what i am awareness of my true nature is called awareness in short so experiencer cannot have awareness the human beings have awareness because humans have knowledge experiencer is completely empty awareness itself is not experiencer it is an experience remembering who am i that is actually an experience that is actually a state of mind there is a state of mind where you don't know who you are it is called ignorance or darkness non awareness uh, sometimes we say non awakened also what is the awakened state of the mind where you know who you are and the knowledge is simply this that i am not any other thing i am not any kind of experience it changes so this is called awareness it is given very um, clearly in the program there is a chapter on awareness so thank you everybody for joining today see you next time